Just so you know skydiving is a pretty dangerous but fun activity, but not as fun as jumping from a spacecraft into Earth. For skydiving, you'll naturally feel a massive amount of air rapidly hitting you as you go down. Note, you go down because of gravity, and you might take some safety items like a parachute to help you land safely, but what if you jump from space? Why would you fall? There is no gravity in space to pull you down. And how would you land? Where would you land? Could you use a parachute? And above all, what will happen to your body? These and more are the questions we'll be answering in today's video, but first we will be watching a real-life video clip of a man Felix Baumgartner who on October 2012 jumped out of a spacecraft in space into Earth. Yes, into Earth. And at the end of the clip, we will explain the science behind some of the strange things you'll see in the video. For example, why didn't Felix burn up in the atmosphere? Why did he not float off into space? And other puzzling questions. So, stay close and watch this video till the end. Is he, is he, what is he doing? He's, he's spinning, isn't he? Felix has just gone supersonic, but he's lost control. One minute and 30 seconds, and stable as a rock. Felix, you calling me? Uh, keep talking, Felix, keep talking. Three minutes free fall, three minutes free fall. Great, thank you. I have been for a long time. For a long time. Sounds like I have a half hour. The laser is smoking up. Oh, I keep the laser smoking up. Felix, you're at the coldest altitude. The further you fall, the warmer it's going to get. I'm pulling right past you. Felix, you we're so proud of you. You did absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I couldn't have done any better myself.
Wow, what a sensational yet amazing moment of achievement. I almost teared up at some point in the video. I bet you have some puzzling questions that needs answers. Just so know, if your question wasn't covered in this upcoming discussion, please do well to drop it in the comment section below. And if you like this content and want to see more, do well to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell icon, also give this video a like. Number 1. Why did he not break up, or pass out, when he went supersonic? The precise physiological exertions experienced by Baumgartner's body as he momentarily reached 833.9 miles per hour, or Mach 1.24, during his descent are still being studied by his team. One of the jump's key scientific goals was to learn, via a series of monitors on his body, more about what such an experience does to the human body. All we know is that he survived, which proves that pre-jump speculation that his body might explode or disintegrate due to the stresses were ill-founded. Baumgartner himself says that he felt very little as he broke the sound barrier because his insulated suit buffered him from external sounds and forces. Number 2. Why didn't Felix Baumgartner burn in the atmosphere? Generally, meteoroids have a lot of kinetic energy because of their high speed. That energy gets transferred into the atmosphere as heat. Compared to meteoroids and re-entering spacecraft, Baumgartner wasn't moving rapidly. The amount of energy he had to shed wasn't high enough to produce much heating. Number 3. Why did Felix Baumgartner not float off into space? Because the Earth has a lot of gravity. If you want to stay in space anywhere near it, then you need to be orbiting it. You can't just float. You need to be moving extremely fast sideways. Even at the altitude of the International Space Station, 400 kilometers, the Earth's gravity is still 90% of what it is at sea level. The reason it doesn't fall back to Earth is because it's moving sideways at 27,600 kilometers per hour. Effectively, it is falling back to Earth. It's just that the rate it's falling at matches the curve of the Earth, so the Earth curves away from it at the same speed it drops. That's an orbit. The reason astronauts on the ISS appear weightless is not because there's no gravity, it's because they're in freefall continuously. So when Mr. Baumgartner stepped out of his balloon exactly the same thing happened, he went into freefall. But with close to zero horizontal speed he was unable to achieve orbit. That's why we need rockets. The only way you can get into space and stay there is to ride on the fastest machines ever built. A balloon ain't up to the job. N Number 4. What was the biggest danger that Felix faced? His team identified 16 key risks that had to all be overcome for the record attempt to succeed. They included ultraviolet radiation, wind shear, landing impact, extreme temperatures, hypoxia, oxygen starvation, decompression sickness, entering a flat spin during the descent, shock-shock interaction, an explosive effect when shock waves in the air collide when passing through the sound barrier, and fire aboard the capsule. But the team said two dangers hung over Baumgartner above all others, a breach in the suit or capsule, and the accidental deployment of a parachute. Number 5. How much sleep did he get before the jump? Before the jump, Baumgartner's team built a schedule to ensure he was fully rested. This involved going to bed precisely 12 hours before the ascent for an 8-hour sleep. But due to the hectic schedule on jump day, he was awake several hours before dawn. Baumgartner has said that he likes to draw in a sketchbook as a way to clear his mind before a major jump. Number 6. How long did Felix take to reach Earth? After depressurizing the capsule, the point of no return, Felix perched on its ledge for a few final moments before making his death-defying, multiple record-breaking leap to Earth. I'm going home now, he said. He started 99,000 feet higher than Mount Everest and it took him just 909 minutes to get back to Earth. Number 7. What was so special about his suit? Baumgartner's suit and helmet were described by his team as his personal life support system. The suit was modeled on those worn by pilots of high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft, but it had never been tried in a free fall before Baumgartner started testing it. It had four layers consisting of both breathable Gore-Tex and heat and flame-resistant Nomex. The internal layer was a comfort liner. Next was a gas membrane that helped to retain air pressure. A restraint layer then helped to maintain the suit's shape. Finally, 
the external layer was constructed of Nomex to protect against fire and temperature extremes. It was made by a U.S. company called David Clark that has been making suits for astronauts and high-altitude aviators since 1941. Number 8. How did Felix land? Once he exited his free fall by deploying his parachute, Felix was able to steer himself to a preferred landing spot. Number 9. What records did Felix Baumgartner break? In total, the remarkable feat broke three world records, the highest free fall, the highest manned balloon flight and he became the first man to break the speed of sound in free fall. He reached 1,361.5 km per hour. Hey, you made it through to the end of this video and I bet you learned a lot, now free falling from space and skydiving will not be a bad idea on the list of fun activities to do on a summer break. Check out our other awesome videos and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching.